In this SketchUp tutorial, I'm going to be going over the process uh, to make some base cabinets for a kitchen or you know some type of built-in element. And our final product will look something like this. So this is the house model that I've been using in the last couple of videos. So if I just kind of zoom in, you'll see that our final product will have this type of look to it. Okay, so it's a simple base cabinet with some traditional type of doors, a toe kick, and um, a basic countertop going across the top. So I'm just going to switch my view to a blank version of the model. Kind of zoom in here a little bit. And before you get started, don't forget that you need to group together the walls and the floor. If you don't do that, there's a a very strong chance that you might end up you know glued to the floor or the walls and have a little bit of a mess. SketchUp is tricky like that so just make sure you have that grouped at least. I'm going to use my line tool to get started and I am not activating that group. I am working on top of it so it's going to be a, a totally separate thing. So I'm going to start in that corner pull my uh, line out and I think I'll come out uh, 12 feet There we go. And then I'm going to pull out for a depth of 24 inches. I'll come back this direction 10 feet. Over to the right 10 feet. Go back 24. And SketchUp does a nice job of inferring exactly where I want to go. And I'll just meet up in that corner again. Once I'm done with that L shape, I should be able to come in, use my push-pull tool, and just bring that up. I think I'll bring this up maybe about 34 inches. Okay, so we have something that looks about like this. Okay. Once we have this in place, we could go ahead and actually put the toe kick in at this point just so the basic profile is ready to go. So I'm going to come up and grab a rectangle, start in that lower front corner and make a rectangle that's four inches by two inches. Okay, then I'm just going to use the follow me tool to push that through all the way to the other end and when I click, you'll see that now I have this nice cutout where the toe kick for the cabinet will go. Okay, once that's in place, we can set up some guidelines to actually draw the face on the cabinets. So I'm just going to come over to one side to focus on. Now these cabinets are really just for show. It's going to be a solid piece behind it. There isn't going to be any um, shelves or, or functioning drawers or anything like that. Okay, so then I'm going to come in and grab my tape measure tool. And I'm just going to divide this up. We'll just divide this up evenly. So I'm bringing a guide over to the five foot mark, so it's right in the middle. And then I'll grab one and I'll come out each direction two and a half feet. And then two and a half feet. Just so I can get the face of this whole section divided up. If I actually wanted some sort of um, you know a gap between the doors that type of thing this would be a good place to do it. So I'm going to actually grab these guys and then um, make some more coming off either direction. So um, I'll make this kind of dramatic just so it's easy to see. So I'll go one inch on either side and once again this is just for the gap. Okay, so we should have four doors with this two inch gap in between. Now I've put those in the middle here, but I don't actually have them on the ends yet. So I should definitely come in and put a two inch gap there and there as well. 
Now I don't want them to run into the top or the bottom, so I will grab a guide from the bottom and come up two inches there. And I'll come down two inches from the top as well. And if I wanted to put some sort of you know, cabinet and drawer in here, I'd want to bring down a couple more guidelines. So perhaps I'll make that drawer um, six inches deep just to keep the numbers easy. And I'll make another gap here, but maybe this time I'll just make it one inch. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to spin to the side to make sure those guides look like they're all on the surface. That's good. Every once in a while they'll kind of hop out on you a little bit. Now that I have my guides all set up, I'm pretty much ready to go. Uh, but what I'd like to do is actually just triple click on these cabinets and make them a group. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I would like to keep these uh, drawers and doors a separate item from um, the object they're resting on just so they can grab them and move them easily later. So I just triple clicked on the back portion with the kick out and I'm going to come in with a right click and make a group. That's all there is to it. Okay so now once that object is grouped back there I'm going to come in with my rectangle and I'm just going to trace a couple of these shapes okay so I have the drawer and then the door there after that I can use the push pull to make these you know, as deep as I want I think I'll keep them fairly flat I'll just do an inch for each so we can see that there's a little bit of depth to them now the style of the cabinets you know, would really be up to you, but just to show how you might go about adding some embellishment to them, I'm going to go in and grab the offset tool. And on the door, I'm going to come in and offset this maybe two inches and maybe uh, two inches again so I get something that looks like that. And then up on the top, I'll do the same thing. I'll just do two inches, and maybe we'll just kind of leave it there. Okay, so it still looks flat, but what we've done is divide that surface up into different faces. Now I'm just going to grab my line and connect these corners here. So this is going to have that very um, traditional cabinet look. Um, see, you know, probably made out of oak or something like that. Okay, so just connected those corners. Once you've connected those, we can actually go in and do something kind of interesting. So um, if I came in and just double clicked on this face right here, so I'm just getting that inner square. If I grab the move tool, if I pull out or push in, I'm actually able to, I'm actually able to do all sorts of things. Uh, but I can make it, you know, either recessed or come out a little bit. So I could say I want that to come out, you know, on that red axis, maybe, um, you know, one inch, for example. So you'll get something that looks like that. Okay. And then I can do the same thing at the top. So it's just a, you know, a quick and simple way to add a little bit of detail. I could then go in and, uh, you know, add some handles or, you know, anything like that. Once you uh, get something that you like, that you're pretty happy with, go in and make these into groups as well. So I'm going to make the bottom one a group, triple click, make the top one a group, and then I'm going to shift and click and make the cabinet door and the drawer a whole group as well. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to very easily come in with them selected, grab move, hit control so I'm actually making a copy and then I can go in and snap it to these guides. Now if I just back up a little bit you'll see that now I have all these cabinet doors in place very nicely on this side. You can go up to edit and delete guides just to clean that up a little bit. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. 
I could definitely whoops, use these and uh, just copy and rotate them on the other side. So what I'm going to do is shift and click all of them, grab move, hit control. I'm just going to move them you know, out here just so they're going to be easy for me to grab. Okay. I might even go ahead and say make a group out of that whole thing just to get it um, real easy to deal with in a minute. Then I'm just going to come over here, grab a few guides, two inches in from the end, two inches in from the bottom, I believe, and then we can move that into place. Okay. What I want to do is actually select these cabinets now, or the faces really, just the faces, and I'm going to rotate this whole group 90 degrees and then scoot them over. So I'm just going to grab move and move them you know, a little bit closer and then I'll come down, click this corner, snap it into place, and there we go. We have some cabinet uh, drawers and doors. Okay, now I'm just going to grab my eraser, erase those guides. There we go. And the last step might be to just put a simple countertop. Um, going across the top. So I'm going to grab my line tool and I'm just going to start in this corner over on the left edge and trace along the cabinet. And I'll just make this kind of thick. I'm just going to go up two inches back, uh, let's see, maybe 22. And then if you want to put a backsplash in, this would be a good time to do it. So I could go up maybe four inches. back two, and then snap to the bottom there. So now I'll have a nice profile that I can send along the top of the cabinets. Since this item down here is grouped and this is separate, what I'm going to do then is grab my line and actually trace along the back. If you don't do that, you won't have anything to use a follow me tool with. Once I've traced that back or front edge, either would work, I can use the follow me tool, click on that face, and just bring it along. Click when I'm happy with where it went. Now many countertops actually will have um, a little bit of an overhang, so I could use the uh, push-pull, and you can just modify this. So I could come out perhaps an inch, an inch, and all of those edges there. That looks pretty good. And you could also go in and you know do something like modify with an arc to give that a nice beveled edge uh, you know, and add some details like that. But basically when you get to this point, you have some kitchen base cabinets. 